made everything want everybody want everything now. Um, so I would implore you to like you know make it year five, man. Like, what's wrong with that? Like, free housing is a great thing. You understand? Know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> man, bills are man, bills are something. And once that start hitting, start start to hit you in the face, bills. Then you have a significant other starts to hit you in the face, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. The idea of you working on your craft goes down and down and down, and then you say to yourself, I might as well do the job. That's the end. All because you rushed to get out of school and face the real world. I don't want to be a performer, but instead, like a behind the scenes producer like Max Martin, like you, who like, people don't know outside of the music industry. What kind of a path should I follow? Like, is the only road to like start touching people's copies in a studio and somehow to <laughs> <laughs> um, That's one of the roads. I mean, go for that. I'll actually. Um, Music is such a like the one thing that I did also learn in college is that the music industry and you trying to get into the music industry is not exactly the way it goes. The prerequisites are not as clear. And and it doesn't run in semester. And there's no advice to tell you what the tape is. Um, that's one way to do it. Another thing is you have to pack up and just move to Los Angeles. If you want to do, you know, just to, even to get in the scene, because music and being behind the scenes, in order to be behind the scenes, you have to start learning what the actual scene is, mm -hmm. right? Knowing, you know, who are the other behind the scenes people that came before you? Where did they go? Where did they live? Who did they learn from? Like all of that is, is very important for you to be that person. Because I I can rattle off a bunch of names that's behind, been behind the scenes that your average, you know, it's not necessarily future, it's future team. Mm -hmm. Right? And and I promise you somebody in Future's team was also on Jay-Z's team at one point. Was also on uh, Metallica's team at one point. You know, that person we're talking about was, you know, that example, was Jerry Heller, who ended up with NWA, but started with like Elton John in the 60s and 70s or something. So these people are the ones that's behind, but in order to get there, you have to be within the scene to see exactly where they go, where they've been, what, they, what they've done, and what studios you need to hang out in. And I know a lot of kids that in 2003, they, they hung out in studios that are now senior vice presidents at labels because they just stuck with it and always stayed in the scene. So, like, but is there any way to get in the industry? It's like other than basically getting people's coffee, like you said, move to LA. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say you had to be being in the scene doesn't necessarily mean being getting people's coffee, mm -hmm. right? I'm saying go to a city where a scene is and visit studios like that's another thing about the music industry you want to break in you're going to have to get on people's nerves like you're going to have to always bother people right there was a kid that there was a young producer that always bothered Another great producer at the time by the name of James Jensen, you may know him as Jay Hill, the late Jay Hill. And it was always this kid that came to Detroit and bothered him all day about this is my beat, this is my beat, this is my beat. He was the most worsome kid ever. But he always stayed around and he always bothered Dilla. He always bothered and Dilla finally listened to his music after the tenth time this kid coming around. And I've seen these kids all the time, just always adamant 
about, it wasn't about getting coffee, it's about I want you to hear me, I want to be in this, I want to do this. That kid's name was Kanye West. <laughs> right? So it, it starts, everybody starts at that. Oh, it's this kid that comes by the studio all the time and he just sits here. Um, Jazzy J, who was a legendary DJ from the 1970s, tells a story about how this one kid came and sat or stood in front of the turntables every night he DJed at a, a party on the Low East Side in Manhattan. Every he just stood there and he stood there every night for like a year or six months or something. And the kid finally introduced himself. Hey man, how you doing man? My name is Rick Rue. You have to be in the scene and you have to be seen in the scene and even if it gets around the other crews like hey, you know, <laughs> Those kids always end up being the sole controllers of companies. Like, all because they fought like crazy in the beginning. And it is necessary that it doesn't have to be the whole myth of donuts and coffee. 